Sri Lanka, the teardrop of India. Nestled like a jewel in the azure waters of the Indian Ocean, it is a country of rich geography and tradition. A tropical island of deep serenity and spirituality, it is home to over 19 million people. On December 26, 2004, an earthquake measuring 9.0 on the Richter scale erupted in the Indian Ocean off the coast of Sumatra. Its seismic power generated a huge tsunami that rocked the coasts of several countries and changed forever the landscape, the economy, and the people in its path. In Sri Lanka, more than 30,000 people were killed, thousands more are still missing, and almost a million are homeless, mostly in the southern and eastern coastal regions of the country. The Sri Lankan government declared a state of emergency and immediately requested international assistance to help them rebuild the lives and heal the hearts of their people. Ashid Ball and John McMahon from the For the Love of Children Society of Alberta answered that call and arrived in Sri Lanka on January 6, 2005 to assess the damage and offer aid, care, compassion and support. They took medicine, food supplements, water pumps, toilets and school supplies and distributed them to villages and hospitals throughout the tsunami ravaged region. Ashid and John noticed that a lot of the aid that was reaching Sri Lanka was rotting on the docks in large containers or spoiling in the heat due to inadequate refrigeration. They took careful note of the needs of the local people to avoid a duplication of services and to ensure that they would bring or buy only essential supplies the next time they returned. That's good. In April 2005, Ashid returned to Sri Lanka with society members Julia Hart and Nehru Bhatia. Their goal was to continue to provide a wide variety of services. This included food, clothing, medicine, water pumps, psychological services, toilets, educational supplies, toys, and sponsorship for several children. They were met by Dr. Faisal Khalid and Dr. Maria Wanaguch of the Sri Lankan branch of the society. The team traveled through the areas hardest hit by the tsunami, from Kalmuni on the eastern coast all the way around the southern tip of Sri Lanka to Colombo in five days. They boarded a Russian-built Y-12 plane in Colombo that would take them to the Ampara district. They drove to Kalmuni, where the tsunami first hit, to begin their aid mission. This is a dangerous area of Sri Lanka. The terrorist activity level is high here, and much of the debris has yet to be cleared. Human remains still litter the beaches where there used to be homes. Oh, yes. Yeah, the stream. Permanent housing is a top priority for the citizens who have been rendered homeless by the tsunami. The society met with the manager of the National Housing Development Authority for a progress update. Mr. Shiva Parta Sundram revealed that 27,000 permanent new homes would be needed to cover the area from Kalmuni to Portaville on the eastern coast of Sri Lanka. About 27,000 houses were fully or partly damaged. About 6,000 deaths. Although plans are underway, so far no new homes have actually been built. Right now nothing has been done to replace any of these homes, but uh, hopefully in this near future, uh, within what, four months or so, maybe they, they can get started on this, because uh, a lot of people are frustrated right now. In Sri Lanka, it is astonishing to view the area and to realize that people are still living in temporary shelters. Tents and metal structures are scattered at long intervals throughout this vast coastal region. Just come inside and you see all is, is just a roof over their heads. Um, there's a little small bedroom in there. 
and this is supposed to be their kitchen area, just about everything else in here. The people living in these temporary homes express their anger and frustration as the shelters are too hot and lack running water and toilets. Imagine living in a tent or metal shelter in 30 degree heat with eight other people. Very small tents and they're divided between uh, two or sometimes three families. Many Sri Lankans have left the tents to live with relatives and friends. They return occasionally to maintain a claim on the land that their shelter sits on. The tent villages are also prone to sickness and disease. With so many people living in one shelter, illness spreads rapidly. My children and sister, husband, all are here. This little girl was suffering from a high fever and chills. Her family allowed Dr. Faisal to attend to her and remove her from the tent for treatment. She is one of the lucky ones. Tooth plus, you know, that infection <coughs> spreads and you get, you know, after a couple of days, if you don't take any antibiotics, oh. you get your tonsils and all your glands inflaming. The people of Sri Lanka are proud of the fact that they can come together to help one another. Yeah, it's very hard in here. They are saddened because officials from the government and several NGOs have toured their devastated communities and no one will commit to a permanent housing plan or answer their many questions. This Sri Lankan senior is offended because a politician who has never visited labeled them poor people. She resents the fact that he is making decisions on the type of home or land to expect from an office in a city unaffected by the tsunami. They decide how much well, square foot their home should be. Oh, is that? And you know yeah. what sort of education that's, they should get. That's right. But you tell that person that his child should go to school here. That's no way. right. He, oh, is that? I don't think, you know, I know for a fact he hasn't even come here to start with. But he's writing reports on how these people should live. Take your part, poor people. You know, these people, most of them in these areas, they're well to do people. That's right. They are, they are farmers. Yeah. Okay, they are the backbone of our country. That's right. They are yeah. fishermen. Right. And they are not poor. <laughs> a fisherman balances himself in a homemade canoe to catch crabs while he waits for a new boat and net. He stresses over the fact that the government wants to move him inland because his job is on the water and fishing is all he knows. We're right now at Hambantota. That's where the uh, waves came in first and uh, the whole area as you say, is just totally um, demolished. All the homes were demolished here. The tsunami survivors are not refugees. Before the big wave, many of these people had a modern home, successful career and growing family. When asked whether the generous outpour of funds or aid from people around the world has improved conditions and their quality of life, they are quick to point out that one has only to look at the condition in which they are living in to see that the aid is not reaching them as readily as they first thought. The roads, railways and bridges seem to be coming along at a fast pace and the people want to know why they are not receiving the same priority. How long you? Three months, more than three months now. It's It's very hard. That's not good. Mr. Nabavi Jannard, chairman of National Housing and Development, said that a total of 66,000 permanent homes are needed to replace those lost. So far, only 300 are actually built for the whole of Sri Lanka. Yeah, they have started, but uh, permanent housing is not yet because uh, we are in a mighty hurry. Okay. To complete the temporary housing. But there's how many actual permanent homes built? Any, any as yet? Or? No, in Hambantara, I think they have just started around 10, 15 yet. 15 homes or so? Maybe 15 or 20, they have just started. Okay. Jannard indicated possible land sites for new homes on a map marked by the Sri Lankan president, Shandrika Bandranayaka Kumaratunga. When queried about the tardiness of the housing authority to develop permanent homes, Mr. Jannard said that the designated land on the map did not always reflect the actual landscape. But if you go and see on the ground, right. you can't find. Either it will be rocky, it will be marshy. The fear of future tsunamis and the regular monsoons that hit the country from May to July prompted the Sri Lankan government to prohibit the development of homes and villages inside a 200 meter zone of the waterfront. Those people whose lands fall within this zone will be relocated to government lands, slowing progress even further. Plots of land here can be purchased from the government for as little as $6,000. It is the hope of the For the Love of Children Society of Alberta 
to buy some of this land. With the assistance of Canadian developers and volunteers, they plan to build 100 new homes themselves. Hospitals and clinics also felt the impact of the tsunami. Many are completely wiped out, and others suffered irreparable structural damage. In Kalmuni, the Maruthamuni Hospital was completely destroyed. They have set up a temporary hospital to assist the public until land can be located within the town to rebuild. Land is right now pretty hard because they want to have this hospital central somewhere in the town so it, it's accessible to all the population around this area. Ashid and the society gave out much needed medical supplies and brought special dosages that catered to the children. They also gave toys to the kids to relieve some of their pain and offer them some comfort. Is that? Can you do You want this one? Okay, you got it. <laughs> she knows what she wants. At the Porterville government dispensary, Ashid and his team handed out more medicine and supplies. Dr. Mario Wanaguch joked when he said, You have heard of Doctors Without Borders? We are called Doctors Without Medicine. 60,000 population in this area. Right. We are covering for that. So you're the only doctor on staff that day? Uh, yeah, yeah, that day. Clearly, the temporary hospitals lack adequate space, supplies and staff. A psychologist told Ashid that there are only two of them in the whole province to administer to the traumatized people who have witnessed the loss of their loved ones. They are simply overwhelmed, overworked, and are finding it difficult to cope. They welcome the addition of psychologist Niru Bhatia, who will assist by counseling the children. The pain in the eyes of the people is felt throughout Sri Lanka. In Portaville, mass graves dot the coastline. People who come to mourn the dead are saddened because they did not receive a fitting burial. They pray on the edges of the mass graves. The plots are not marked individually and they are unsure where their loved ones are located. A little boy grabbed Ashid's hand and led him to his younger brother's grave. It was small, too close to the beach and marked with a stick. He said he did not like it when people accidentally walked on it. There's about uh, 200 graves in all of this area. The family of a young female doctor prays at her grave. They feel lucky because they were able to persuade officials to bury her separately so they will have a place to honor her. No one knows what will become of these makeshift monuments once the redevelopment begins. There is hope that land will also be set aside to provide cemeteries for the dead and places of worship for the living. The For the Love of Children Society of Alberta took their mission statement with them to Sri Lanka to provide help, hope and support to disadvantaged children locally, regionally and internationally. This is Sifara, and uh, we've got a little profile of her too. Um, this is Sifara's home that was destroyed. During this trip, they sponsored 34 children in villages from Kalmuni to Colombo. Profiles are made up of eligible children who have lost one or both parents. They will be equipped with food, clothing, school fees and medical aid, totaling approximately $35 per month per child. I'm going to see Rufina Begum. It's one of the children that we're going to sponsor. In fact, that we're going to pay for her education, pay for her food and clothing, um, as well as medical uh, attention as well. So let's go and see if we can find her at home. This is her home. Sometimes the kids are hard to find because they are constantly moving, but the society locates every one of them. Right now she's not here. The she lost her uh, father, and the mother cannot uh, adequately look after her. So 
we decided to sponsor her. Krishanthi is a 10-year-old girl who lost her mother the day after Christmas in the tsunami. When Ashid first met her, she was numb and withdrawn. She smiled when she learned that the society was going to sponsor her and a sudden ray of hope shone from her eyes. As she accepted a plush toy from Ashid, she drew his attention to her feet. She had no shoes. The society rectified that problem immediately. Is that your house? Rashid Mohammed will also receive sponsorship from the society. He sits in the sand on the foundation where his house used to be. He has a tent, but prefers to stay outside. He says it brings him closer to his mother who died in the tsunami. Though little remains of the home they shared, he keeps her memory alive by being there. Pretty well off destroyed. And they can't build right here. They have to move the school inwards now. Like the hospitals, most of the village schools are also flooded and many simply obliterated. They require land for relocation, furniture and school supplies for the children. All 200 kids from this school in Porterville escaped the tsunami. They have set up a temporary classroom close by. The society needs just $6,000 to buy the land to replace the school. The locals will willingly build it and the children are eager to attend. How are you? So what's your name? Uh, Nanika. Nanika. Oh, that's a nice name. In Goal, Ashid, Julia and Nauru visited the Sambodi home. It is a school for disabled children. Forty students were swept away by the waves and the already challenged children are further traumatized by the events they witnessed that day. Oh, okay. Nauru will remain here after Ashid and Julia leave to provide the kids with psychological services. The society was also able to donate clothing and money so that the programs at Sambodi House can continue to rehabilitate the little residents. Ashid and the members of his team were impressed by the willpower, strength, and sheer determination of the people of Sri Lanka. Every day they met a new unsung hero, someone who had risked his or her own life to save someone else. They recognized these people by presenting them with a society medal. Keep up the good work. I just want to make one statement. Okay. Uh, this is not only for me. I it's for this on behalf of all my team. Team. Oh, good. Me. And I hope, I hope that all of them will get this on day. And this is from our society and from all uh, Albertans and from all of Canada. We'd like to award you th with this award, okay, today, in, in light of your bravery, okay? Dr. Rakhmo Gamaj was on his way from Colombo to Matara when the first wave of the tsunami slammed into the express train he was riding on. He yelled at those around him to head to higher ground. When the second wave hit 20 minutes later, he managed to climb a tree. The train rolled several times, trapping people inside and under it. When the waters receded, Dr. Gamage pulled people from the train and ushered them to a nearby temple where he aided and resuscitated 50 of the injured. Another selfless survivor was Kumara. A sailor patrolman, he had been scanning the ocean with binoculars looking for terrorist activity. He saw the water rise up and gush over the concertina wiring that separates the beach from the village. He knew he could handle the turbulent water, so he ran towards the waves to save 30 innocent children who were engaged in prayer studies in a mosque next to the ocean. The last stop for Ashid and Julia before returning to Canada was Colombo. The city was hit by smaller waves than the rest of the country, and the damage was manageable. This elephant is famous in Colombo. He performs for tourists at a little park in the city. The pachyderm and his trainer were near the ocean the day of the tsunami. Like many animals, he sensed something was not quite right. 
He led his trainer away from the shore before the waves hit and saved the trainer from being swept away. The tourists are coming back to Colombo and life is returning to normal. Though seemingly unaffected by the tsunami, everyone here knows someone who died and someone who was saved. There is still a great need for money, food, medicine, shelter and basic supplies in Sri Lanka. Ashid has single-handedly given $75,000 worth of aid to the people and communities here. For Ashid, it was imperative to be physically on site to witness the magnitude of destruction caused by the tsunami. He was able to assess the damage and allocate the right supplies depending on the individual circumstances and needs of the people. Ashid takes time off with loss of pay from his job with Canada Customs to volunteer his time and efforts. He wishes he had just a fraction of what was received by the large relief organizations so he could contribute even more. One person with sometimes very little to offer can make a difference. Ashid does it because he genuinely wants to help and believes in the power of the people to help themselves. The For the Love of Children Society of Alberta can always use your help. Log on to www.fortheloveofchildrensociety.org to join the society for updates and event information. Their success is a direct result of the many, many volunteers who selflessly devote their energies towards this wonderful cause. <laughs>